What's going on everybody? It's Joel from Umphreys McGee and I'm here to give you a little bit of a rig rundown for what I use on a typical night when we are playing a concert. So thanks uh, Ryan Storm for, uh, for having me and letting me uh, go through this. But uh, we're going to start over here with my stage piano. So this is a Roland B piano. I've had it in rigs since 2013. So I've played, you know, 10 years of shows with it now. And I typically use two different uh, keyboards. It has uh, a bunch of different preset ones, but it's especially just for the piano. This one doesn't really do much else. The, uh, the action on the keys is pretty awesome. I'm a big fan of that, very realistic. Um, but uh, it has a nice sound that, you know, it, it can be challenging to cut through with two, uh, two lead guitar players, really, to, uh, to cut through the mix. So um, Chris Mitchell, our uh, front of house engineer, uh, is the one who kind of discovered this and heard someone else playing on it and said, this sounded really good in the stereo setting. So that's, that's kind of the reason we started by trying out the Roland B piano. So here's a little uh, Cemetery Walk 1 and a little Sun, sun 2. too bright you kind of get a little darker but one of the big things about this is I think it has over a um, hundred different uh, velocity settings on the action meaning that the volume can be a hundred different things depending on how hard you hit it uh, which gives it a very realistic quality uh, to the dynamics uh, I think it's pretty cool so I typically use this uh, preset called triple power um, and then I also use the uh, upright here sometimes <laughs> some of the bluesier, kind of like Americana sort of things where you want the, the stripped down sound. Really nice, really nice up right there too. So that's the Roland B piano. Um, one pedal that I have it going through over here, which is a lot of fun, is my uh, little TC electronic flashback. And I like to use this reverse delay setting. Uh, ping pong delay too, which is a uh, stereo delay. That can be a cool one in a, in a big room. Um, but those are my two typical ones that I'll, I'll use for this. But I love having a little something on the piano just so I can get ambient or weird if I want to. Um, so let's move on up here. Here's the mini mode Voyager. This has also been in my rig uh, for a really long time, since about 2005. And uh, so there are a lot of sounds that were programmed onto here already, so I, I did some manipulation of them. But um, you know, so many great sounds that uh, that I love to use. And uh, you know, for her birdbath, I uh, I like to do the uh, T Teen Wolf guitar here. <laughs> So the, uh, the Mini Mag Voyager is a monophonic instrument, meaning you only play one note at a time. So it's, you know, very much used for, uh, for leads. Um, you know, if I want to do some, uh, some weird stuff, this is also a great one to have just to kind of, uh, you know. Get super weird with it. Um, but the, uh, the filter on this is really what it, to me is incredibly special and uh, something that you'll hear me manipulating quite a bit throughout the, throughout the show. So here's another lead that... You can see I'm using the 
that you bend over here quite a bit. Here's where the modulation. Um, but even though I'm only playing one note at a time, I think the, the big thing about this instrument is it's still got a really wide variety of sounds and, and things that I can use. And kind of is the, uh, the one instrument that I have that can compete with the guitar players. So it's nice to have something where I can, where I can do a really big lead. And, um, you know, even a, a nice long sustained note, I think that's the other, uh, the other really beautiful thing that it has is, you know, you can keep manipulating it throughout after you've touched it, which uh, for a lot of other keyboards, that's not the case. You hit it and then whatever you did is what happens, right? So it's kind of nice to have that extra little artistic uh, addition you can make to the, to the Moog. So um, I've got the Moog going through two different pedals over here, and one of them is a uh, is a Moger Foger analog delay pedal, and so it's got the uh, the tap tempo on here as well, so I can kind of get it you know in with whatever uh, tempo I want it to be, either you know the quarter note or the triplet usually. Um, I have this off right now, but um, this this particular delay pedal has this extra little LFO uh, wave addition to it. And so what I like to do is um, just make the repeats go slightly out of tune and it gives it this really big. You can hear it just kind of going sharper and flatter. sharp so I like to I have this pedal on the roads as well so we'll get there because it's something I like to use on the roads too but um, yeah that's what I use for uh, a delay pedal here and then this is really important um, this instrument for whatever reason goes in and out of tune and there's a little fine tune knob here that you can uh, you can check it with but I would listen back to recordings you know 10 15 years ago and I would get so annoyed because I thought it was in tune and then I'd listen back and be like, oh, it's like a little bit flat or something and it just bothered me so much. So I actually went and got a, uh, got a tuner here so now I can look at it in real time and see, you know, what's going on if I need to move it up or down. And uh, the other really nice thing about it that I didn't anticipate when I put this in there was that I can bend notes now, know exactly when I'm when I'm hitting these other, you know, pitches. Or like if I'm trying to approach something and I want to slow it down as we're getting closer. You know, now I have the ability to do that. So I think that's kind of fun is that, um, you know, I can use this as a real-time thing to do some, uh, do some bending to get more expressive or, you know, add a little drama, a little tension to whatever's going on. Yeah, so. So that's what I have uh, the mode going through. Let's keep going here. So right now I've got a uh, Fender Rhodes uh, 73 uh, that we've you know, kind of maintained over the years. And I'm actually gonna be getting a vintage vibe piano pretty soon, which I'm really excited about uh, with variable voice control, meaning that you can move the, um, the pickups back and forth on where the, uh, where the tine is. So you're gonna get a different tone, which you can't do with a thing like this. I mean, you would have to, you know, take it all apart and it would take hours. So this is like a, a huge thing to get um, those different sounds that you're looking for, you know, whether it's kind of like, you know, I've been, I've been kind of on a, uh, a deeper, uh, fuller sound now, but, you, you know, we can make it a little more like in the treble range and I don't know, it's going to be, it's going to be really cool on the site for that. But that's not what I have right now. Right now I've got this guy. Um, which I really love. This this keyboard, the Fender Rhodes, is uh, such an important part of the keyboards for Humphreys McGee. And uh, I've recently actually switched where the B3 and the, the Rhodes are uh, after having uh, our crew guys go through and figure out how much time I spent on each keyboard. And, uh, so it's been really nice to have this and be able to face the rest of the band because I feel like 
improvisationally, this is the instrument that I like how it fits in the Humphrey sound the most. So I kind of lean toward going to that. And I think part of it is because it's got that flexibility, you know, it's just playing some kind of little Herbie-esque riffs there that can be really funky and percussive. Or, you know, like we were talking about before, the Mogerfoger delay pedal, I can turn on and get these little slight detunings. And it gives this kind of like, say like, you know, it's like ghostly ethereal texture in the background. And so I love doing this stuff too with, with Humphreys where it's, I can like kind of set a little bed and you know, and it just, just sits there, you know, once, once there's uh, you know, drums, bass, and guitar to make things sound really good, that also helps. <laughs> but I think one of my roles with Humphreys McGee is let the guitar players and let our drummer play lots of notes. And I like kind of being more of uh, someone contributing to the palette or somebody contributing to the harmonic context of things. And so, you know, that's another thing I think with the Rhodes that works really well is doubling up uh, something or, you know, complimenting what Ryan's doing on bass. Um, that sort of stuff tends to work pretty well in decent octaves. That sounds good. Um, it's just a really... It's got so much flexibility and, and it just fits with rock and roll, you know? I, I grew up playing classical piano, so uh, the piano has always been my first instrument. But once I got a Rhodes, there's something about the way it works with the sound of our band that really seems like it's the right answer a lot of the time. So, uh, yeah, so I love the Rhodes for, for all that stuff, for being creative, for comping, for soloing. Um, so moving on, coming up here. We, oh, one more pedal I guess on the road. I've got this uh, Eventide H9 that I like to use. In here it's kind of got a nice little tremolo, kind of whirly sounding thing. I like that a lot. Um, it's got a really fun ring mod. Maybe we'll get a uh, ring mod jam tonight in Cleveland, but Ryan has this pedal here too, so we'll do the bass and keys ring mod and just like, you know, freak everyone out. <laughs> um, and pretty good. A little distortion for, you know, if I want to do more of a, like a lead thing, like the end of Phil's Farm would be a good example for that. Um, let's see, what's a good... Uh, uh, here's a, uh, here's a here's a good riff that I'll go to the uh, this sort of nice phaser for nighters. It's a little loud. I gotta remember turn the gain down when I put that pedal on. Moving on, the Prophet. This is a uh, six key polyphonic um, synth. A lot of different, a uh, lot of different sounds and cool, weird stuff that I use. Um, you know, I've I've got a couple different pads that I use that are really nice on this. That. song like uh, Miami Virtue. Got my delay pedal up on. Yeah, so it's got some nice, you know, punchy pads too. It's got some great, um, 
these cool little arc things that we can do. I like to throw those in sometimes. Um, So yeah, you can hear just a really cool variety of sounds. And then I got this uh, Strymon delay up here as well that we can throw in the mix. It's actually got two different delays, so see if you can hear this. I can make them a little more different. Yeah, there you go, catch them there. So that's kind of a fun little effect to throw on, you know, the W trippy. All right, move over here, the classic B3 organ, right? I should mention also, this is the only stage volume that I have. I'm going direct into everything else. And uh, that's our front of house engineer, Chris Mitchell's preference to try to keep the stage volume as low as possible. And that will aid in the clarity of the mixes. So uh, I did have, the road's going through a, uh, a Fender amp before, uh, Fender Twin, and so, you know, that was something he was like, we gotta, we gotta bounce that thing. So, I, I trusted him, and now, like, I can't believe how well the road's cuts in our recordings. It's something that kind of stands out to me, so. Fortunately, I have to admit, Chris Mitchell was right. Um, so, here's a little uh, Miss Tinkle's Overture, which is uh, one of the songs where I really have the, uh, the B3 blasting. So, I like this setting for Humphreys because, um, again, it, it, it mixes with the guitar as well. I, I don't like to pull out the. Uh, to me, that can like kind of kind of cut and get a little. I don't know when it's when you have too much of it, it, it can get a little annoying. So I like to use this setting here. So here we go with tinkles. vibrato on, sometimes I have that off. I, I like to leave it on at the bottom for a little, you know, left hand runs, There's, that sounds good. But I'll so only sometimes use it at the top. Here's a little example of the sound I would use for like uh, anchor drops. Yeah, so much like uh, the Rhodes, the B3 really has lots of different sounds. And, you know, you can get weird and spooky with this thing, too. Which is really fun, you know, get a little percussive. But uh, it's, uh, it's great when it's time to be, you know, either loud or also have something that's sustaining under the guitars. Um, or even add harmony, uh, you know, with, with the guitars, for instance, like uh, Wizard Burial Ground. <laughs> yeah, so I'm throwing in, and it really it works nicely with the guitars. So I like this as like another. You know, when I'm adding harmony to lead guitar parts, I feel like it, it works pretty well. But uh, yeah, so the, the B3 is a favorite and um, obviously a classic instrument. And this is uh, one that I picked up from Scott Larned, who was the keyboardist from uh, Dark Star Orchestra and who unfortunately passed away. And this was, uh, I think, in his home. So, um, and I think it was one of, the, it was out on tour with the Dead at some point, that would make sense. Um, so, you know, it's something that uh, is a really important, beautiful, beautiful instrument. It's a 68. Um, I've got a 122 uh, Leslie speaker back there that is uh, what's producing the sound for it. So, yeah, you can't really replicate the, uh, the sound of a B3. <laughs> the, and the, the foot switch. Oh, yeah, right. I've got the, uh, the speed control down here. 
So, and then the volume pedal as well, and Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. We have some Star Wars, Star Wars characters peppered throughout the stage. We've got Yoda, uh, we've got R2-D2 over there. Um, there used to be a, uh, what's his name, the, the Sand People, those guys. Andy and one of those, Andy's Egyptian, so that, that was like his vibe, you know. Um, all right, so this one is super fun. Here's the, uh, uh, the Mellotron 4000D, and uh, this, was, uh, this was created by a guy in, uh, in Sweden, uh, Marcus, and then, uh, you know, I found out these were out there, and I was like, oh man, I'd love to have one. So the, the real Mellotrons are, of course, these like, they, they barely function, you know, it's just hard to keep them going. And so this is using all the samples of that. So it has the real time, the, the real effects of like, you can only hold a note for, I think it's eight seconds or something. And it goes away just like the real Mellotrons ran out of tape, right? So, um, so there's some cool sounds on this. I like to use the, uh, the strings. And it's also got this little mix slider here, which is super cool. So you can go back and forth. So I use it a lot for the strings. I also think there's like, Kind of try to use these humorously but there's this uh this male choir and then the boys choir actually let's double the, the male one is really funny it's like... <laughs> uh, and then you can mix it with the uh the boys choir here you have a full Yeah, so uh, I use this in, uh, in uh, Remind Me. <laughs> it's a satanic choir or something. Like that. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a fun one to have. One other, uh, let's see if I can come up with this relatively quickly. One other one that I use it for is um, one of our newer songs, and that is uh, Hiccup. Um, and it's got this really nice, let's see, one of these vibraphones, and then I use the uh, Celeste sound on this. Okay, there we go, this one. Yeah. Ah, it's so fun, it's just so pleasing and nice to the ear. Yeah, for these major seven chords. <coughs> So yeah, that's a, uh, the, the Mellotron is one that's kind of fun to throw in there just when, you know, need a break from these other keyboards, get something a little bit different, a little different texture. Sometimes the strings, sometimes the weird vocals. It's all good. <coughs> all right. So finally, the Nord Stage, which I'm mostly using just for uh, doing uh, clap stuff. I also like this for a little sewing. It's pitch bend is sick. One of the best things about the Nord stage. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's pretty much what I use this one for. So. There you go. There's the whole rig. And uh, I'm, I appreciate you guys tuning in and checking it out with me. If you have any other questions, feel free to find me on uh, social media, Twitter at Gold Like Joel. Same on Instagram. Hit me up with any questions you might have. And uh, thanks again for checking it out. And thanks to Ryan Storm for coming out and filming the course.